I don't know what, how fast my internet is. Let's try this. 4x dot today. So today, today life. Great. Perfect search, right? There it is. So let's get going. Okay, good morning. I guess I should say good morning. It is good morning in New York. I am on the other side of the planet. Beautiful, I just found this on the desk. The beautiful Raffles Hotel in Singapore. So it is now 8.50 in the evening for me, which is approximately 7.50 in New York a.m. So I am in the future, which is pretty awesome. I love me in the future. It's pretty cool. So anyway, say, uh, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist at TradersWay.com. Thank you for being a client. Namaste. Throw your diamonds in the sky. Thank you so much for being a I'm trying to get my face in there. Thank you so much for being a client to Traders Way. We appreciate you. Brady, you're you're in the same time zone? Cool, man. Yeah, 8.30 in the evening. All right. Very cool. Kuala Lumpur! Nice. Cool. So I do these sessions 7.30 in the morning New York time, approximately London lunch, approximately early evening in Asia. What a great place to trade though, right? Imagine you had all day to trade Asia and around 3 o'clock in, uh, in the 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, sorry, 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, London opens up, right? And you can trade to what? One o'clock in the morning, be done. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I guess for some people, it'll be a little early or a little late for trading New York. New York not even opening to. I guess it's ten thirty, right? I guess it's a bit late. Still, it's pretty good. Maybe Dubai is better. Dubai is four hours difference. Yeah, maybe Dubai is better in time zone. But anyways, it was pretty cool. Yeah, but I see it's later than dinner time. So anyways, um, I do these sessions Monday through Friday. Uh, I want to cover technical analysis, fundamental analysis, anything else that can help you. I'm on my tablet right now, so uh, my charts are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty mediocre. But, uh, you know, I just don't want to leave you hanging while I'm traveling. We're a team, so uh, I want to be here for you. So maybe uh, maybe you get 80%, but 80% is better than zero, right? I think, right? I don't know. Brady trades into 2 a.m. Yeah, see, that's a little late, though, right? But I used to trade 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. No, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. is what I used to trade back when I first started trading Forex. So uh, anyways, uh, let me know um, you, how you, we, we have charts here. Can you see the whole thing? I think you can see one oscillator, one currency pair, all that kind of stuff. Cool. So again, uh, thank you for your patience with me. Uh, I will be leaving, I might leave,
tomorrow at midnight. So tomorrow's web webinar will be fine. I might miss Thursday, but be home Friday. All right. Um, if things go differently, I'll I'll stay in either Singapore or Hong Kong until the weekend, which means then you won't miss any webinars. Yeah, and then NFP on Friday. Yeah, so I will be back for NFP. Most well, if I head home, I will be back. Uh, I'll be back at home to do non-farm payrolls. Okay. So so I'm I'm here Wednesday uh, Wednesday night. So that's Wednesday morning webinar for you. I'll pro I'll miss Thursday, but I'll be back for Friday. Okay. Something like that, or I, I stay here at the raffles for you know three or four or five more nights until I'm sick of drinking gin, and then uh, I'll head home. So I, I don't know what's going on in my life. That's pretty typical. All I know is I care about you, and I'm here to do more extra with you. So um, let's go through the charts, huh? I think what's best is because uh, I don't have 18 screens and all that kind of stuff. I've been away. For, from the charts, I might even need to put my glasses on. But um, why don't we do this? Why don't we just do it like open request night? Maybe I go for a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. I'll just answer your questions and, and look at things and all that kind of stuff. And just do bare bones technical analysis, right? You know what I mean? Because it's a cold start. Because I've been traveling all that. It took me 33 hours to get here. Okay. So euro, dollar, pound, dollar, USD. So okay, go through the majors. That's pretty easy. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let's do this. Uh, 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 uh. So let's do pig first. So on here, I got weekly pivots. So I can tell you, bears had a shot. Okay, bears had a shot. WM3. If they succeed, they're targeting targeting down here uh, 131.82. So let's say down from 32. So you could have, or let's say bears did sell it at 35, and their target is 32. You know, this bulls did buy it here. And they do have permission to consider at 33.50. Someone did buy it here, and the next place to buy here, and then after that, it's a deathward spiral down into a you know flame. Mike says, "Do I always? Would I always? Depending on time of year, Mike. October, November, probably not." Uh, I never really freaked out until Thanksgiving, and that's when I'd start sweating bullets. I know it didn't work this year, but that's just how it is. Sometimes, thing, you know, this time it's different. Um, yeah, it, it was not as good as we would have liked. But only if you were carry trading, right? The other, if you were monthly swing trading and did what you were simply supposed to do, not and not not carry trading, but swing trading. Remember, carry trading, you're in it for the carry, so you're in it for long uh, long term, not not a couple of days, not even a couple of weeks. You're in it for at least a couple of months, right? And in that this year, that strategy did not pay off. It worked fantastically in September. If you were long pound in, you made a, you made a thousand pips, right? Or was it two thousand? It was ridiculous. No, it didn't stick. Well, son of a gun. But if you go back in history and look at, you know, 
the carry trade scenario based on seasonality, it worked most of the time over the last 10 years, right? So it just comes down to that. I mean, that's that. I mean, it didn't work out as good this year. But if your context is, you know, what if you said 90% of the time over the last 10 years, it worked reasonably well. Some years were better than others. Last year, it didn't move until the U.S. election was over. The year before, I think it was a bit choppy. The year before that might have been choppy as well. And the year before that was great. So this was like the the odd year where September worked fantastic if you're on pound. Didn't work so good on the other side. So do you mind if I just, since I'm tangenting, bear in mind I'm super tired. I was at the bar drinking coffee, right? Lost in translation, foreign businessman, hanging out at the bar, drinking coffee? Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'll tangent a little bit. Wow, I even forgot what my tangent was going to be. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. All right? Yeah, we're, we're, this is free flow. Right? This is Taoist free flow here. All right. I know we're looking at pound dollar, but can do you mind if I talk about Aussie for a second? I believe, and I don't have prices in front of me, but I believe iron ore has been going up. Wasn't that a leading indicator back in March? I said you should start looking for leading indicators to show um, potential demand or actual demand uh, for A, global macroeconomics, but B, if, if the world is improving on a macro level, you're going to need demand for things like steel. The two major exports out of Australia are iron ore and coal. What happens if you melt them together at just the right quantities? I think it'd be like 99% iron ore, uh, me uh, melted iron ore with 1% coal. What, what's the output when it cools off? Steel. Nice. Carbon and iron. Right? Now you got yourself some steel. So I'm like, hey, back in March and probably even February, I'm like, look, it's probably too early. But if things improve, in particular maybe over the summer, why am I losing? Um, if things start improving globally, gee whiz, I just, wow. So if, we start, if things improve globally, we can see an increased demand uh, for things like energy, and we're going to see an increased demand for things, uh, you know, commodities that are actually put to use in a, like, you could argue gold or something, but I would say more like, how about copper? What about iron ore? What about coal? That kind of stuff. None of it's sexy, but it's useful, you know, like a real commodity. So anyways, Ozzy hasn't really benefited, but they did turn, as Stone says, a positive trade balance. And that was another thing I actually asked you guys to look for. So where's our Ozzy, right? So maybe we tiptoe into one of these things. Iron ore prices did rise, right? You just checked? Sweet. So Maybe this is good. Maybe it didn't play out this year, but what are you going to do for 2018? So, um, you know, earlier we had been talking about uh, you having some time to business plan your trading business for 2018. Maybe this is something that you want to put in your, your outlook. Improving macroeconomics, improving demand for commodities, and guess what? If there's global demand for commodities and commodities need to travel from one country to another, 
they need to be paid for with money, which means money needs to be exchanged. And that means supply and demand. So how could you look at this? You could say, uh, I'm going to have to change the color here. That's supposed to be a euro. Euro? That was terrible euro. Dollar. Okay. And you just like anything, you have to look at demand and supply. I don't know if this is right, but that's demand. That's supply. So if demand for oil increases, let's change this to Canadian dollars, right? CAD. So if, it, if macroeconomics improve and there's an increase in demand for energy and Canada is a net exporter of energy, you can argue that Canada could benefit from selling energy to foreigners. Which means they have to exchange their currency for Canadian dollars. Demand for Canadian dollars is the demand curve shifts right. Okay? Which means the old equilibrium price for Canadian dollars was here, but the new equilibrium price is here, C2. Demand for the currency so that once people have Canadian dollars, they can buy Canadian oil. You understand? So there's an increase in demand for a lot of different products. But if China, for example, has to use iron ore and coal that's not from its own soil, they need to buy it from somewhere else. And they need to buy it with the commodity, with the currency from somewhere else. Now they can get their iron ore and coal from a lot of different places, but Australia's got lots of iron ore, and their coal is fantastic, beautiful, beautiful coal in Australia. So, you know, if they need the coal for energy, not for making steel, but if they need it for energy, they want to buy clean coal. In coal, Australia's got awesome coal. As far as coal goes, it's fantastic. So you might as well buy Australia's, right? So, you know, Australia hasn't per performed that well in 2017, right? But maybe that changes. So, I don't know. So I got that off my chest. Thank you for listening to me in Babel. So anyways, there are sellers here and they're targeting this. There are buyers here, and there are buyers here, and they're targeting north. So it just comes down to, are you a buyer of pound or a seller? So like, let me let me draw this. Oops, let me move this over there. Hang on. Okay. Uh, clear. All right, let's do this again. So. Do you see that somebody did this? Okay. And you see left, when I look left, see the bottom of this wick? I know people are thinking this move here. Okay. Now, the pivot point theory that I teach in the training course is look for this. This is the best price. This is an acceptable price in an aggressively bullish moving market. But this is more like your best case price. Now look left after that. Right? So if you are a bull, we have approached the buy zone. We have. Okay? And if you're a bear, you should count that as a double top. Since we were 93% overbought. Okay. How many people have taken the swing trading course?
Okay. One of the things that these guys these guys have learned is that I teach two counter trend trading strategies. Two. I have two counter trend trading strategies. Anyone trading these pivots would know that this is the the counter trend target. So this could just be a counter trend into the target, and that's literally the thing I teach right here. So maybe that's it, and this does head north again. I don't know. So, no, they're all hypotheses. But you, you should now be look doing scientific methodology to identify or, or to validate your hypotheses. This is what's playing out. Could be. It might be, but we don't know. Cool, well, right? Especially since there's only two. Look, trend up again, trend up again, trend up again, trend up again, trend up again. Here's one bomb. <laughs> like, oh. Okay. Is there something wrong with my audio? Oh. Oh. There was me singing. Boy, it must be that bad, huh? All right. How's is this better? Yeah, sweet. Let me try it again, see if I can break it. With or without you. With the you, oh, 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 I can't treat with or without you. Nice. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So we're, we're fine. All right. Let's move on. Darko. So there's the thought process there. So that there's your big dog. And you're like, well, Wayne, you didn't really tell me anything. Well, what do you need to, need to tell you? I, look, if you're a bull, you buy here. If you're a big seller, I don't know anything. What else is there to do? If you're a bull, you buy here. If you're a bear, you sell there. What else do we need to talk about? You're the one that needs to know whether you're a bull or a bear. But I can tell you some people probably still be bullish on this, and if so, they would buy it here. There's already evidence started to do that, but I don't know if it's going to go up the rest of the day. 55 says it could double top back at the end three. So again, if all you did was sell here or sell here again on Wednesday or Thursday, you're still selling where you're supposed to sell, and you're still targeting the same target. We're just going through reality to figure out the timing. Do you sell it Monday? Yeah, you could have. What day is it? Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? It's Tuesday, right? Tuesday morning for you? Yeah, okay, so you could have sold it yesterday, so you either did or you didn't. Well, what if you're a bear and you have an opportunity on Wednesday to sell it up here? Yeah, you probably would do that too, because it still hasn't made a hard high. So you know there's still going to be bear. There are bears there. Whether you see it or not, whether they entered a working order or not, we know they're going to try it again. They tried it here and they did something here. There are people that are going to see the 55 double top drop. It's the losing money is okay. Like having trades that lose is okay. Now, if you're a buyer, then a seller, then a buyer, then a seller, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to be consistent when you have inconsistent behavior. I can't drill that home or emphasize that enough. Okay. 
if you were a bear here, 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 and here, here, you look, look, you're selling into an uptrend, and you need to recognize that. Wouldn't it be better to wait for a double top and a, and a drop? If you bought here, here, and here, and here, and even here, you got reasonable results. Okay? Just buying off the 21 is a basic strategy. Right? All of this. So right, right now, 21 is above the 55. 50 suggests the uptrend is slowing down. So this could double top and drop, but it might not drop till Wednesday. And you know how many times have I told you, you don't have to be the first person into this trade. You don't have to be selling the left shoulder. What's, what's better than selling the left shoulder in a head and shoulders or a double top? What should you make a career on? The right shoulder. Right? You don't need first mover advantage. And psychologically, I don't know if you get me on this, but one day you will get me. And it will liberate you from this crazy idea of having to outsmart the market. That's a very, very, very dangerous idea. That you need to be smarter than everybody else. But that you knew this was going to fall. I would rather you have a career. Uh, let's clear this up. Where, let's say you're a bear, you don't sell this move. You sell this move, and you sell this move. I want your career to be based on, uh, let me change the color here. I want your career to be based on selling the drop here and selling the drop here. Not, not the left shoulder, the right shoulder. The, the retracement, not the break. Somebody said break. Uh, it's really not Kenny. And that, it's actually, a, 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 when I first started trading, like let's say my second or third year, um, or maybe, you know what? It was probably more like I started FX boot camp. People, had this common knowledge, and I think they bought someone's book or went to a seminar or something, but it's probably when scumbags started educating people. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I used to see this all the time where they said, wait for the break and sell three candles after the break. And everybody knew that that's how you were supposed to trade. Now, I'm self-taught, so, right? And when I started hearing this from people I was coaching, you know, like daily webinars and stuff at boot camp, I'm like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't think it's ever worked. And all of a sudden, there was like a three or four period where everyone I met in webinars and stuff, right, in conferences, everyone was taught this. They brought the same BS. Now, I don't think you guys, I haven't heard it in years. <clears throat> and I ask questions from you guys. I don't hear it anymore. But there was this, this idea of, like, let it break, let the neckline break, wait one, two, three candles to confirm, and then sell. It was, everyone had this baggage with them. Which time frame? It probably doesn't even matter which time frame. It doesn't matter. All right, so anyways, uh, so what I suggest is you wait for the pullback back to the line and then take the back. So I, 
you, the, the cusp of your business is going to be here. And I think an Elliott Wave guy would tell you that that's a three wave, an expansionary three wave. Okay, yeah. Cool, right? Cool beans. All right, so that was, you want your own, right? Oops. You're oh, you're oh my hero. Okay. So last Friday we had a trade plan that suggested maybe just maybe just maybe. Let's see if I can get this better. Maybe just maybe just maybe down here. You know what it was? Is it's monthly pivots, and I switched it to weekly. So if there's a monthly pivot down here. Is that's all I'm trying to say, right? Probably a monthly M1. Okay. Now I draw my pivots up, my fibs upside down, so you can see this is labeled 618, but I draw it upside down, this would have been out of the box. So you can see I have this dropping, pullback dropping further, and this is a drop of that. So if you were to draw it, let's not draw it, or let's not come draw it. But we, we saw it like this. So on the smaller time frame now, in this circle zone, Right? You get this idea of down, up, down, inside the circle. Right? Then you got to use your pivots. So if you've taken the swing trading course, oh, hang on, hang on, I'm going to clear this out now. The sell zone is here. So the idea is this is this, which we did last week already. So the smaller time frame now, let's say not a four hour, but a one hour chart, is trying to do this now, okay? which is just a, a smaller move of the bigger time frame. So I call the big one the macro and this one the micro. Ooh, whoa. 118. Yeah. Okay. Now, these gray area are buy zones, or at least they were last week. They might be month, but at least they're price action type buy zones. Okay. So, on a different, you know, if you're a bull, you're going to look at it like uh, you, you really want it to be like this, right? So this, you really want to buy it in here if you're a bull. And if you're way down here, it's scary. You know, you're like a lot less attractive down there than this, okay? So go to, right, so what do I need to do? Back out here even further, okay? So can you see now that at the very least, even a bull should be uh, cautious of this top? Like, that wasn't supposed to be part of the plan, right? You know what was part of the plan? Buy off the, off the pivot. By the way, that's the other counter trend trade in the, in the swing trading that's the other one out of the two. Okay, this is the second. This one is also taught. So this is one counter trend. There's the other one. Both worked, which is great. Uh, so that was part of the plan. That's part, everything's golden here. This is great. Everyone's happy. And then all of a sudden, WTF? Why are we back here? And the vulnerability is now we do one of these this week. And that really sucks if you're a bull. 
right? So with that in mind, as you're a bull, your confidence is, is being challenged, right? And you really want this to go up. But I don't even remember why we had to set up the, off the double top last week. Do you guys? Was it a pivot? I think there's a monthly pivot up there. M, uh, MM3 is my guess. Yeah, it is, right? So that's the monthly swing, right? You see, none of this is random. The only pivot that would make this fall would be the MM3. I'm not even looking at it. I don't have it in front of me. I don't have other things. I'm in a hotel room 33 hours away from my house. I look at that, and one of the only things I can think of that would cause a move like this in an uptrend would be the monthly M3. Well, it turns out it's a monthly M3. So what are the monthly swing traders doing? Well, the bears that have a monthly swing trade are, are taking this down. Not random. So that has to be part of your trade planning. So if, if that's happening, you should be selling these little micro rallies on the one hour and on the 15 minute, right? Every 15 minute cycle, you should be taking down. Every time the 15 minutes overbought, you should probably be taking this down. But you'd have to have it on a monthly scale. Right? Oops, let me put out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sweet. Are you guys skipping your monthly analysis? Is anyone willing to admit that, that you're not looking at your, your monthly pivots? No, one, no one's willing to admit that? Because some people back in the day would just jump into a 15-minute chart and look for a trade. One of the things I've given, one of the pieces of advice I've given in the past is to print out your monthly pivots, take out a black felt tip marker, one that's really stinky, a permanent marker, and write on the chart whether you're a bull or a bear, and then put it on the wall. Yeah. So anyways, uh, okay. What's going on here? Uh, Kiwi, what do you think? Breakout, retracement, extension. You see the way it plays? Right? Do you guys remember doing this one? Check it out. Do you notice I actually bought it here? It was a breakout pullback roll reversal off the old, right? I'm talking about this space right here. Breakout pullback off the, off the roll reversal here, okay? So let's say this was on a one hour chart, okay? So that's one fraction. All I did was buy a breakout pull back on a roll reversal. This one over here is the same trade, breakout, pull back, roll reversal. The only difference is it occurred on a four hour chart. So for looking into the future, one thing you'll start to learn is the fractal geometry, right? It's the fractal geometry that you should anticipate 
that when you catch a breakout on a one hour and it takes off, maybe you're up 100 pips, it's coming back. It always comes back. Always, 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 always comes back. Two pieces of information of why that's important. One, whenever you tell yourself you're missing it, oh, it's breaking, I'm missing it, I'm missing it, I'm missing it. You didn't miss it, bro. It's coming back. Either in two minutes, <laughs> yeah, right, James. It's either coming back in two minutes, two hours, two days, two weeks. But if you missed it, you missed it. You don't deserve it. If you didn't have a trade plan, you, if you don't deserve it. Don't worry about it because you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Um, but it happened here, went to a logical extension, then retraced and came back to the logical retracement, but just on a higher time frame. What will happen is you, you can do things like your long-term long, short-term long short which means on smaller time frames, you could actually be selling this so that you could buy it back later. So you might be short for two days, but be long for two weeks. Short term short, but long term long. Do I recommend that in your first five years? No, probably not. But as you get good, that'll start to creep in because you, you can anticipate it falling. Even though you bought it and, you're ri and it's rising, some of these pivots and price levels are pretty obvious places to take profit. So you could say, wow, there's going to be a lot of bears up there. Or a lot of these bulls, they're doing something like measuring the distance here and then putting it in here and taking profit. Right? So you can anticipate a lot of these things. And you're like, oh, look at the pivot cluster, look at the psych level, look at the monthly pivot, whatever it is, right? And you could say, well, there are going to be bears there, or the bulls will want to take profit there. So why don't I take some skin out of the game, book some profit, let it drop, and if it comes back to the reversal, I'll buy it back. So let's say you take half your lot size off here. You can put it back here, right? Simply by taking profit, anticipating the pullback, and then when you anticipate that the pullback is probably over, buy back in with the original money that you took profit on. You're just re-entering the trade. So all you did was put risk on, take risk off, put risk back on again. OK? Oh. And you, you see how it bounced off that pivot? There's no chance that that's a random walk. Okay. I'm sorry, Givenus. I'm so tired. I don't think I could. I may not have said it logically. <laughs> but to say it again, I, I think is impossible. Uh. Do one more, I suppose. Give me one more, yes, the uh, Okay. <sighs> I'm like an old man. I'm looking at nine p at night. How am I going to get through this? Well, the, how the micro moves fit into your macro trade. So some of these questions I'm getting, you're, you're like, Wayne, should I get out of my monthly swing because I'm at a weekly target? Well, no. Not if, if it's a monthly swing, why would you get out on a, a weekly target? But at some point down the road, you could take the weekly moves, make money on the way down. So here, let me explain it this way. Let's say you're a bull. You're a bull, let's say, all year, and you're buying whatever currency pair it is. But you're also good enough, since you know where all the buy zones are, you also know where all the sell zones are. And you know the sell zones on the one-hour chart, 15-minute chart, four-hour chart, daily chart, doesn't matter. Daily, weekly, monthly pivots, you get them all. And you can start anticipating where maybe today, 
even though you're a bull, maybe today it's obviously bearish. You might be a bull for the month or for the year, but today and probably tomorrow is definitely bearish. And you, you're at bearish pivots and everything tells you this should come down for two days. It doesn't affect the long-term trend. Well, you could sell it, make money on the way down in some ways as a hedge, but you're not in it to hedge your position. You're just in it to make money. So you're doing income trading against a wealth position. Okay? So you, you sell for a day or two because you are good enough to know it is almost for sure going to come down for the next two days. So you pick up uh, 100 pips down, but you're really long-term long. But you don't want to do that in the beginning. Pick a direction, trade it, get better so that you can identify these levels. It's not being, I don't want you to be in a situation where you're buying and selling for random reasons, but you're, you're good enough to know where the bulls and bears are. Even if you believe it's bullish, you know where the bulls are gonna wanna take profit and you know where bears are gonna try to sell it. So maybe you make money on that knowledge. You don't have to, but you could. But the easiest and best thing to do is simply to take profit at those and then wait for the pullback and buy it back. Long out, long out, long out, long out, that kind of stuff, right? Like this, down, 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 up, up, sell, right? Down, 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 up, up, sell. Now, do you keep adding to the positions? Well, what I taught, you know, 12, 13 years ago, the basis of the basic, basic FX boot camp strategy, 2155 cross, right? So you sell this 5A cross, you take profit. 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 And now you've made a higher high and you're done. That's in the book. That's the, right? Right? The 5A cross up is you taking profit. Well, Brendan, the, the basic definition of a bullish market is that 21 EMA has crossed above the 55 EMA. By definition, this market is bullish on this time frame. This pair, this time frame, it's bullish, that's that. I don't have a 200 EMA here, so I don't know if this is a reset, but it looks like a reset in here somewhere. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm fading fast. Any other last important questions? I will be here tomorrow. That's what the two, okay, well, the reset would either be a, a break above, a, like in this case, if you break above the 200 EMA, there's nothing in the world that's bearish, right? The 200 EMA is a target, not an entry, so you trade it back to the 200 EMA. At that point, the market is neutral. So if there is a 200 EMA here, uh, if it was green, I would tell you the market is neutral, but slightly bullish because of this, okay? But because the 200 EMA is here, I think you're, there's a high propensity for this to play down and then up and then maybe break back down. Okay? So it really depends where are you relative to the 200 EMA as well. 
The 200 EMA is fair market value. The 200 EMA is where bulls and bears agree. So is the market going to go up or is the market going to go down? Kenny's like, we're actually on the 200. I don't have it drawn on the chart, but I can calculate it. So I'm like, I, I know it is. Yes, Katie, it's a trick question. If bulls and bears agree, same thing, Henley, trick, trick question. If the bulls and bears agree and the market is at fair value, you have no way of knowing who's going to take over. Because now it's, it's a standoff. It's like playing chicken or a Mexican standoff, right? The bulls are standing there with their whips and their knives. The bears are standing there with their, uh, what, machetes and pitchforks. And uh, they're staring at each other. Whoever makes the first move starts the fight, but no one really wants to get hurt today, right? So we're just standing there. No one wants to make the first move. You don't know who's going to make the first move. Okay, if we are down here, I'd say the market's bearish, and there's definitely people that want to sell this. If, we're, if we slow down, I'll say, well, it's still definitely bearish, but we're losing conviction, so we're vulnerable to something like this. If we're at a 200 EMA now, it's not a bullish market, not a bearish market. I have no idea what's going to happen. So you might as well want to you know, take a break. Okay. With that in mind, I have to call my wife and children and tell them how much I love them and miss them. But I want to take this opportunity to, uh, to tell you how much I love and miss you. John says, that was a pretty good mix of fundamentals and technicals. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still battling on. That's where you get the most of the, uh, the gems. Uh, I'm just too old, too tired. Oh, Daniel got home already. <laughs> right on, Daniel. So I, I want to also thank Daniel for being a great host. Uh, Daniel took me, uh, well, we went swimming this morning, then he took me out for soup. I'm like, Daniel, I've been saved for 20 years, or what, not 20 years, I don't know, five or six years. I need to visit you in Singapore. I need to get to Singapore, and I need to have soup. And I had this whole idea of what, what it was going to be like. So I, I, I did some research, and a, and a friend recommended me that we go somewhere. And I'm like, Daniel, I want to go to this place and get soup. And he's like, mm, no, that's not the right place. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I want to go to this other place. I'm like, sure, Daniel. Sure, Daniel. <laughs> All right, we'll go to your stupid place. So anyway, so anyways, we zip over there, and it's perfect. Like, just like. Oh my God! This place is awesome, right? This is it. This is it. <laughs> so uh, we had a great day. Uh, this is great. I don't know. I had a great day. It was perfect. Just absolutely perfect. Now I'm checked into the raffles. I got it out of the the, the stinking Ritz Carlton. This is my new home. I'm gonna buy it. Cool. So, anyways. Uh, I got some big boy stuff to do um, all tomorrow, so, but I'll be here uh, to do the webinar. And I don't know where I'm going to be after that. I don't know if I'm staying in Singapore or if I'm heading back home. Um, I either need to stay and do NFP here or go home and do NFP there. So I got to do one thing or another. But tomorrow I'll for sure do the webinar. And by tomorrow's webinar, I will know if I'm on the road or not. So all that means to you is I might miss Thursday, I might not. Uh, yeah, you've got to hit me up fast, Ryan. I'm fading. Yeah. Enjoy that cigar. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight or in the morning. I don't know. Uh, Uh, Daniel and I are heading over to the infinity pool across the street tomorrow, so <sighs> what am I going to have time? <laughs> so 
So anyways, I love you, babe, but I got a job that's been real. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you, Daniel, again for being such a wonderful host. And thank you, everyone, for your patience with me. I, I care about you, and uh, I take you with me no matter where I go. So, yeah, namaste. Yeah, excellent. May the pips be with you. Coffee making you sleepy, yeah. Well, and I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of. I might have a couple more meetings and stuff tonight. So, anyways, I'll take care of you, or I'll, I'll, I'll take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. And there's my mouse. Okay, bye bye.